Douglas Murray has emerged as one of the most articulate voices of reason in talking about the Israel-Hamas war, and I wanted to read you an article he wrote about this accusation of genocide, the, the appalling, perverse accusation that Israel has faced by some. And he so perfectly describes the issue. So let me read to you what he wrote. Like a number of anti-colonialists, William Dalrymple lives in colonial splendour on the outskirts of Delhi. The writer often opens the doors of his estate to slavering architectural magazines. A few years ago, one described his pool, pool house, vast family rooms, animals, cockatoo, and the usual entourage of servants that attends any successful man in India's capital city. I only mention Dalrymple because he is one of a large number of people who have lost their senses by going rampaging online about the alleged genocide in Gaza. He recently tweeted at a young Jewish woman who said she was afraid to travel in London during the Palestinian protests. Forget 30,000 dead in Gaza, he said, tens of thousands more in prison without charge, 5 million in stateless serfdom, forget 75 years of torture, rape, dispossession, humiliation and occupation, it's all about you. It is one thing when a street rabble loses their minds, but when people who had minds start to lose them, that is another thing altogether. I find it curious by every measure, what is happening in Gaza is not genocide. More than that, it's not even regionally remarkable. Hamas's own figures, not to be relied upon, suggest that around 28,000 people have been killed in Gaza since October. Most of the international media likes to claim these people are all innocent civilians. In fact, many of the dead will have been killed by the quarter or so Hamas and Islamic Jihad rockets that fall short and land inside Gaza. Then there are more than 9,000 Hamas terrorists who have been killed by the IDF. As Lord Roberts of Belgravia recently pointed out, that means there is fewer than a 2 to 1 ratio of civilians to terrorists killed. Quote, an astonishingly low ratio for modern urban warfare, where the terrorists routinely use civilians as human shields. Most Western armies would dream of such a low civilian casualty count. But because Israel is involved, Jews are news, the libelous hyperbole is everywhere. For almost 20 years since Israel withdrew from Gaza, we have heard the same allegations. Israel has been accused of committing genocide in Gaza during exchanges with Hamas in 2009, 2012 and 2014. As a claim, it is demonstrably, obviously false. When Israel withdrew from Gaza in 2005, the population of the Strip was around 1.3 million. Today it is more than 2 million, with a male life expectancy higher than in parts of Scotland. How ironic, given the Scottish National Party constantly uh, calling for ceasefire in Gaza. Perhaps they should worry about their own issues. <laughs> Maybe Israel should uh, pass, a the Israeli parliament should pass a resolution against Scotland. <laughs> During the same period, the Palestinian population in the West Bank grew by a million. Either the Israelis weren't committing genocide, or they tried to commit genocide but are uniquely bad at it. Which is it? Well, when it comes to Israel, it seems people don't have to choose. Everything and anything can be true at once. Here is a figure I've never seen anyone raise. It's an ugly little bit of maths, but stay with me. If you wish, you might add together all the people killed in every conflict involving Israel since its foundation. In 1948, after the UN announced the state, all of Israel's Arab neighbours invaded to try to wipe it out. They failed, but the upper estimate of the casualties on all sides came to some 20,000 people. The upper estimates of the wars of 1967 and 73, when Israel's neighbours once again attempted to annihilate it, are very similar, some 20,000 and 15,000 respectively. Subsequent wars in Lebanon and Gaza add several thousands more to that figure. It means that up to the present war some 60,000 people have died on every side in all wars involving Israel. Over the past decade of civil war in Syria, Bashar al-Assad has managed to kill more than 10 times that number. Although precise figures are hard to come by, Assad is reckoned to have murdered some 600,000 Arab Muslims in his country, meaning that every week, to, meaning that every six to 12 months, he manages to kill the same number as died in every war ever involving Israel. There are lots of reasons you might give to explain this, that people don't care when Muslims kill Muslims, that people don't care when Arabs kill Arabs, that they only care if Israel is involved. Allow me to give another example that is suggestive. No one knows how many people have been killed in the war in Yemen in recent years. From 2015 to 2021, the UN estimated perhaps 377,000, ten times the highest estimate of the recent death toll in Gaza. 
The only time I've heard people scream on British streets about Yemen has been after the Houthis started attacking British and American ships in the Red Sea and the deadbeat idiots on the streets of London start started chanting, Yemen, Yemen, make us proud, turn another ship around. Because like all leftists and Islamists, there is no terrorist group these people can't get a pass on, so long as that terrorist group is against us. I often wonder why this obsession arises when the war involves Israel. Why don't people trawl along our streets and scream by their thousands about Syria? Yemen, China's Uyghurs, or a hundred other terrible things. There are only two possible conclusions. The first is a journalistic one. Ever since Mary Colvin was killed, it became plain that Western journalists were a target in Syria. Not eager to be that target, most journalists hot-footed it out of the country. Some who didn't fell into the hands of ISIS. Israel-Gaza wars, by contrast, do not have the same dynamic, and on a technical level, the media can applaud itself for reporting from a war zone where they are not the target. But I suspect it is a moral explanation, which explains the situation so many people find themselves in. They simply enjoy being able to accuse the world's only Jewish state of genocide and Nazi-like behaviour. They enjoy the opportunity to wound Jews as deeply as possible. Many find it satisfies the intense fury they feel when Israel is winning. Like being fanned on your veranda while lambasting the evils of empire, it is a paradox to be sure. But it is also a perversity and it doesn't come from nowhere. I think Douglas is completely right that it's a moral issue, that Israel touches on people's moral nerves and sensitivities. Some people, especially in Europe, who may have some sense of guilt about what happened in the Holocaust in Europe, by saying that Israel's now the Nazis, they can uh, cleanse themselves of their feeling of guilt and put it back onto Israel. The Jews have always faced these accusations of being a source of immorality, but what really is going on is that people who attack Israel, they themselves are grappling with their own issues, with their own conscience, which the Jewish people in Israel represent the voice of God in, in the world. And hostility to the Jewish people is a hostility to that eternal call to Sinai, as Hermann Rauschening put it. Rauschening worked with the Nazis and then eventually changed and sided with the Allies. But that's what he said it comes down to, ultimately. It's uh, people who they themselves are grappling with their own uh, morality or lack of. And by accusing the Jews, they can uh, dampen their own moral conscience that screens within them. And so Douglas has shown that the accusations are based on lies. And he has concluded by touching on what Judaism tells us is the ultimate cause of the hate, which is, as the rabbis said in the Talmud, Thousands of years ago, the sina, the hatred, sina in Hebrew is hatred, of uh, the nations where it exists comes from Sinai. It's a hatred of Sinai, of Mount Sinai. It's a play on words, sina and Sinai sound very similar because that's what's, that's what's going on. That's what this is ultimately a hostility to. It's a hostility to the message the Jew Jewish people were charged with at Mount Sinai. I'm Ollie Annisfeld and you're watching JTV.